toxicity. Zinc toxicity or zinc poisoning is a medical state from overdose or toxic exposure to zinc. The exposure and toxicity of the zinc can be throughout the environment because it has many sources. There are three sources of zinc toxicity. Firstly, inhalation of zinc. Secondly, dermal exposure. And lastly, oral exposure. For the inhalation of zinc, it can be very depending on the specific compound involved and the duration of the exposure to the zinc. The workers who work with industrial process such as melting and welding may affected due to long time exposure to zinc oxide and may cause industrial disease such as metal fume fever. Metal fume fever is acute and not fatal. Next, dermal exposure also can cause zinc toxicity. Excessive amount of denture cream and heavy usage of cosmetic products, sunscreen and ointment will lead to toxicity to zinc oxide and can cause secondary copper deficiency. Next, zinc toxicity also can cause by oral exposure. This is due to overdose of zinc uptake and zinc supplement. The recommended daily uptake of zinc by adult are 11 mg per day for men and 8 mg per day for women. The LD50 value for zinc uptake was estimated to be 27 gram zinc per day for human. There are two types of zinc toxicity which are acute and chronic. Acute zinc toxicity has short term side effect whereas chronic zinc toxicity has a long term side effect. Next, the symptoms for acute zinc toxicity are nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, headache, anemia, and also gastric irritation. Whereas the symptoms for chronic zinc toxicity are disturbance of copper metabolism, low copper status, reduced iron function, and also reduced immune function. Zinc is used in industrial process such as mining, steel production, smelting metals, and galvanization in which it is being used for the coating to prevent rust and corrosion. Although zinc occurs naturally, improper disposal of zinc which wastes from metal manufacturing industries and electric utilities leads to a high level of zinc in soil. The excess zinc accumulated may cause pollution to the environment. Nearly all the zinc supposedly to stay bonded to the solid particles in the soil Yet, the metal may seep into the groundwater when high levels of zinc present in the soil, which possibly comes from the hazardous waste site. Water contamination caused by the zinc, which naturally found in many rocks and soil at low concentration. The erosions of mineral from rock and soil can introduce zinc into the water and it is only partially soluble. Furthermore, a high concentration of other metals such as lead and cadmium is usually related to high natural levels of zinc in water. One of the adverse effects of the zinc pollution in industrial wastewater is an increase in water acidity and sludge on the riverbanks that leads to the accumulation of zinc in the bodies of the fish. As a result, biomagnification in food chain will occur. Apart from that, large quantity of zinc may also present in the farmland. This situation not only harmful to the animals but also plants. This is because there are only few types of plants that have a chance of survival on zinc-rich soils. Excessive plant uptake of zinc may affect the fresh weight, dry weight, decrease in water content and plant height. Therefore, the diversity of the plant near zinc disposing factories is little in number. The large quantities of zinc in the soil which retard the activity of microorganisms and earthworm to undergo the breakdown of organic matter as well as slows down the decomposing process as an outcome of zinc pollution in the environment. The purpose of the remediation technique is to minimize the heavy metals from entering the environment because when the environment is heavily exposed, it will disturb the food chain and also harm the human being. The methods used to clean up can be in situ or at situ. In situ means in the original place. This remediation technique does not need excavation and transportation of the contaminated soil to off-site treatment facilities. Thus, it helps to reduce soil disturbance, limit the exposure of contaminants to the workers and surrounding community, 
and definitely lower the treatment cost. At situ remediation technique are carried out not in the original place. So this technique has the benefits of manipulating variables such as temperature, aeration and nutrient level to facilitate biological activity and prevent the contaminants from spreading in the environment. There are three categories of the remediation technique. So surface capping is a containment based technique that covers a layer of waterproof material at the contaminated site to create a stable and protective surface. This method works best to eliminate exposure risk, but it does not remedy the heavy metals. The least that it can do is to reduce the metal reactivity in the soil. The surface cap acts as an impermeable barrier to penetration of surface water thereby preventing pollutants from spreading to surface water and groundwater. Selection of a suitable capping device depends on the location and remedial objective. The common materials used are clay and concrete. Surface capping is a simple, quick and efficient technique to remove the risk of soil contamination. The downside of surface capping, however, is that it causes the capped soil to lose its role in promoting plant growth and thus changes the functioning of the soil ecosystem. The second one is encapsulation, also called a barrier wall, is a similar remedial alternative to surface capping. The technique is to isolate polluted soil using a design physical barrier consisting of low permeability caps that enclose underground barriers. Low permeability caps, typically synthetic plastic sheets or clay mats, reduce the absorption of surface water and thereby prevent pollutants from leaching into the groundwater. Surface capping and also encapsulation, they are not entirely different because they share a few things in common. So let's have a look at the third method belong to the physical treatment. So this method is called vitrification. So vitrification is a process used by applying high heat treatment on the contaminated soil to reduce the mobility of heavy metals. In situ vitrification in which the electric current passes through the contaminated soil by inserting an array of electrodes vertically. In situ is preferable rather than at situ for uh, cost and energy efficiency. One of the advantages is easy to apply to the majority of soils with inorganic and organic contaminants. The factors that affect the technique are temperature and volumes of the soils. Temperature used during the process plays a vital role in the immobilization of heavy metals. The volumes of the contaminated soil used also affect the temperature required. The fourth technique that belongs to the physical treatment is electrokinetics. Electrokinetic remediation approach is the latest cost-effective technique that works by creating an electric field gradient on both sides of the electrolytic tank containing saturated polluted soil. The heavy metals found in the soil isolated through electrophoresis, electron sequestration or electrical migration thereby minimizing the pollution. Electrokinetic remediation method operates well for solids having low permeability. The benefits of this method are that it is easy to install, run and economically productive. Moreover, it does not alter the soil composition. The only limiting factor for direct Electrokinetic remediation approach is soil pH fluctuation. That is why in some situations, it is required an addition of buffer in cathode and anode using complexin or ion exchange membrane. So preliminary dissolution is needed to remove heavy metals with poor conductivity or present in metallic form. In such case, the use of suitable electrolytes such as distilled water, organic acid may increase this technique removal efficiency. Type of chemical used as anolyte or catholyte and the method being remediated um, determine the effectiveness of the removal. Let's have a look at the chemical treatment which is the um, soil flushing and also chemical immobilization. So for soil flushing, is an in-situ process of removing contaminants from soil by passing an extraction fluid through it. The extraction fluid to be removed is then collected, reused and eventually processed before disposal. 
Usually, the extraction fluid typically chelating and acidic is injected into the contaminated soil where EDTA is known as the most effective agent. So, flushing the soil is easy, but digging the wells for the collection of the soils can be difficult and costly. When the water table is not too deep, Groundwater drain to recover the fluid for extraction. This technique more commonly practiced by flushing surfactant solution through contaminated site to remove organic pollutants. Chemical immobilization or solidification stabilization SS technique refers to a reduction in the mobility, bioavailability and bioaccessibility of heavy metals in soil. Immobilization of heavy metals can be done by complexation, precipitation and Absorption reaction. This technique changes the heavy metals from the soluble and exchangeable forms into the solid particle, thus limit their transport and also bioavailability in the soil. This method helps to reduce the concentration of the heavy metals in soil for water while restricted their possible movement to plants, microorganisms, and water. Solidification is a method that can be done perfectly in situ or ex situ. A binding agent, commonly a cement or fly ash, is added to contaminated soil during in situ solidification, followed by August steam mixing to transform it to a solid block. If the pollutant buried deeply, a crane fitted with an injector head and a large mixer would be used to inject binding slurries into the subsurface to mix with the waste. The solid block is waterproof, enclosing the contaminants. Nevertheless, the pollutants can become mobile again in the long term due to natural weathering or unregulated mechanical disruption. Stabilization or in situ fixation immobilize contaminants without solidifying them. In stabilization, stabilizing chemicals other than binding agents are introduced into the contaminated soil. Variety of materials have been used including carbonate, phosphates, alkali agents, clay and iron containing minerals. Phytoremediation is a process of growing plants in contaminated soils to remove heavy metals via phyto extraction or phyto stabilization. The characteristics of hyperaccumulators are they have high tolerance for heavy metals, they grow well in metallic soils, and they have distinct capabilities for soil absorption. Translocation from roots to shoots and detoxification and sequestration of the metals in leaf tissue. Lastly, let's have a look at the bioremediation technique. Bioremediation is another option of remediation technique which offers the possibility of using natural biological activity to destroy or affect different pollutants. The good things about bioremediation are low cost, low pack methods that are widely accepted and perform on site microbes or microorganisms are incapable of digesting heavy metals yet they can change the reactivity and mobility of contaminants in details a variety of microbial process will affect the solubility and reactivity of heavy metals